everything is weird when it's new. Like jazz! The little yachty of its day. We're so used to an internet that worked in one way, then the Fediverse came along and inverted the direction things have trended for decades. So today I wanted to go through five things that I was confused by when I first started accessing the Fediverse with Mastodon, because that's what I started on, and probably most people. The first confusion arrives immediately. You have to choose a server. It's it's weird. You just want to sign up for Mastodon. I kind of feel like a hacky stand-up comedian complaining about the options at Starbucks. I just want to get a coffee. Why is it so hard to get a coffee? It's venti confusing. You don't know which server you could choose, if it matters, what the consequences are. Basically, signing up for a Fediverse service is like signing up for an email. If I said to you in the 2000s, hey, sign up for emails so we can talk to each other, you would understand that that could be Gmail, that could be Hotmail. You could set up your own company server using Microsoft Exchange, which I assume is still a thing. What we've gotten really used to is signing up for services that are walled gardens. Facebook is facebook.com. Even when there are different top level domains, it's the same database that it's connecting to behind the scenes. The Fediverse is a network of thousands of servers that are all talking to each other. If I post something on my Mastodon account, my server sends out a little message to all the servers that are following me, letting them know what I said. Got another typo-filled rambling message about electoral system for you folks. It's a decentralized system. If you don't like a user, you can block them. If there is a server producing lots of content that is spam or offensive, the administrator of your server can block or defederate from the entire thing. The solution for a new user is to simply sign up for the default instance inside the Mastodon app. During the first mass Twitter exodus, the nonprofit running Mastodon realized that people found the whole choose a server thing confusing, and so they started recommending a default instance. Because really, for most people, it's just a matter of getting in the door. Then, after a while, if you like it, Fediverse services like Mastodon let you move your account to where you want. It's okay for your first Fediverse account to be coolguy007 at hotmail.com, because you can always move your account to Mr. Grown Up at business.inc anytime that you decide you want to do that. These big servers like mastodon.social are also the easiest servers to be on because most other people are on them. They, by default, have the busiest vibe and the most people at hand, making them the easiest place to learn the ropes and find people. Largely, the more people on a server, the merrier. You can connect with all the people on other servers. It's more just for the default recommendations and finding people. Speaking of finding people, finding people was the second thing I found confusing. Finding people and stuff to follow in general is a whole different video. But literally, finding a person that you know is on the Fediverse can be quite hard at first. I would know something like my friend who goes by the handle Kara Stern. I will have seen her account. I know she uses Mastodon. So I go to the little box in the corner and I search for Kara Stern, but when I search, she's not there. What's going on here is the Fediverse hasn't really solved search using its internal tools. There are so many different servers, so when you type in Kara, Carol, or Carl, most of the time the person will be on another instance. To use the email analogy, if I address my email to Kara, that's just not enough information. Is it Kara at Hotmail? Is it Kara at Gmail? Or Kara at any one of millions of domains? It will work if this person is on my server or if my server has already been connected with them. But if you really want to see someone's profile for sure, you need to type out the full address. Obviously, this is annoying. We're very used to autocomplete at this moment there to save us time or save us from having to remember exact spellings, Googling things clicking on the link. It feels like the old days of the internet typing out www.fullyqualifieddomainname.com forward slash warcraft2.html. The thing is, the Fediverse actually does have a search engine. It's Google, or increasingly Bing, or sometimes DuckDuckGo. Because the Fediverse is an open place, most people allow at least their account's default page to be indexed by search engines. So I just treat the search bar up above your Mastodon search bar as my Fediverse search bar. Just a bit higher. Just a bit, just a bit higher. There you go. Just type their name and Mastodon or Peertube or whatever service, and the first link, it's probably them. The next confusion conveniently happens right here. You click on the link and you go, oh great, I'd love to follow it. It's time for a favorite. I'm liking what I see here. Time to register my formal interest. So you go and click and error. You, you can't just click. You can't just reply. Box will open up to 
take you home. What is this, Kara? So close, yet so far! Well, if you're really paying attention, you'll probably know why. You're not on your own server, you're looking at a different website, and this website has no idea who you are. This confusion partly comes from a problem of Fediverse instances still looking and being on the old internet. Services often look the same as the old social media websites that we're so used to. Some even mimic their appearance. But the problem is, this gives people a false sense of normality. Oh, a box with a few hundred characters, replies, hashtags, profiles, so it's just some sort of Twitter clone. And it all seems that way until you encounter something confusing because it's not really the same at all underneath. So here is mastodon.social and here is mastodon.social. Although these websites may look similar and can interact with each other and often do, they are different websites. The vanilla failsafe easiest way to handle this problem of following people on different servers is to open up accounts in one tab and then paste the full handle in your own server. But obviously, that's a little annoying. A better solution is a browser extension. A browser extension remains logged into your home Mastodon server and it stays logged in even when you're off frolicking around on other people's servers. When you visit a remote server and click on the follow button, it sends a message back to your home server and tells your account to follow or interact with a person or post automatically. It bridges that gap without you even knowing it. I've tested and put a few recommendations in the description for Chrome, Edge, Firefox, and Safari. And while you're down there, don't forget to click on the various things that keep you in the loop for future videos. Continuing on in the process of discovery, when you open up the person you followed on the Mastodon app or view their page from your own server, you might notice their timeline has nothing or very little going on. Maybe just some pinned posts. It creates the sense that there's all these dead accounts, but then eventually you realize they're not all dead accounts when you click these buttons here and open them up on their home server, and you can see all of their posts. You just can't see the posts on yours. So this problem is one which I really hope gets resolved over the next few years. I'll probably make a video about this separately because I find it all quite interesting but I've seen people call it the backfilling problem. If you remember my email analogy, when you subscribe to someone, it is kind of like subscribing to their mailing list. You say, hey, I'd like to get your posts now, friend, and then the posts start rolling in each day whenever they post something. Your server is now like taking deliveries from them. When you subscribe to someone on another server like this, it also helps the other members of your server see those posts and discover the account. For efficiency, your server only needs one copy of those posts and then anyone can decide, oh yeah, I'd like to be added to that subscription and they get to see the back catalog there. But if you're the first person who has subscribed to this account on your server, your mailbox is empty. You'll get everything from this point on, but you don't have anything from the past. The solution to this is viewing people's accounts on the source, like I showed at the start, on their home server. If an account appears suspiciously empty, try clicking the three dots and then open original page. You'll also notice that pinned posts always stay. So it's a good idea for you to pin on your own account a couple of posts too, just so people know that there's actually something there. I think that the best solution is probably installing an extension like the ones that you use for followers and hopping around on people's original pages, following stuff, reading their back catalogs. I would be really surprised, to be honest, if this issue remains a problem in a few years' time for a number of reasons, but I guess deserve a kind of deep dive video. I have a lot of questions about the reasoning behind why Mastodon works like that, and I've heard from the tech guys at Fidihost that other services have a different philosophy, so I guess there's an active debate in the Fediverse as to how this all should be handled. You may notice that the theme here is issues created by having multiple servers. It is the big Fediverse advantage. There's no single person in control and you can migrate where you wish, but there's these intrinsic consequences that make it more difficult to use. But I think it's fair to say this final confusion is really just a quirk of a Fediverse not having completed one critical component, direct messages. Direct messaging is really weird at present. You go to send someone a message, but you're interacting with them in this public interface. It's the same interface that you would use to post publicly, except you choose from the little drop-down box that you'd like it to be private. 
to only involve the people that are mentioned in the thread, it is kind of nerve wracking because like, for example, if I'm sending a direct message to a friend saying, hey, get a load of this other guy, it will message them as well, which is the last thing you want to happen. It's like Mastodon is keeping all of its salt in a sugar jar. You're also just kind of from a UX perspective, not sure if you've messaged someone and it's a little hard to see what messages you have received. I think for most of us, direct messages are kind of like elevated and more important. We don't want them mixed in with public messages where you have this personal message in your timeline going on about dropping off some muffins or whatever. Salty muffins. What's going on here is ActivityPub, the protocol which the Fediverse is running on, doesn't have a direct encrypted message feature presently. Software that's running on ActivityPub doesn't really want to promote the idea that you can send a direct message to someone because it's not really private. Just like Twitter, someone administering the server can read the messages. It's not an end-to-end -end encrypted system. They're being transparent and honest. They don't want to give you a false sense of privacy. So instead, they call it a post shared with specific people. Basically, basically a post shared with one person. The thing is, yeah, I get that. I'm not going to use Mastodon to discuss secrety secrets. That's what Signal's for. But I do want to be able to easily and confidently message someone I only know through Masto about like a meetup we planned and not miss their response. The solution that I found works best, for me at least, is to use a different Mastodon app. The Mastodon default stock app, much like the Mastodon website, does not want to encourage direct messaging. Fair enough, that's their philosophy. But other apps, in my opinion, intelligently place the posts that are privately sent to you in a separate place. My app of choice at the moment, IceCubes, lets you customize the interface and add this feature. It has a desktop app version, so between those two, I don't miss any of my private posts these days, and I keep those posts separated out from the rest of the notifications. If you have a recommendation for an app that does this well, hit me up in the comments, and while you're down there, have a nice day because I already asked you to subscribe, and you, of course, did that. For this particular issue, I know that the work is underway to create a messaging protocol, which is quite exciting. I think there is a space for a messaging protocol that isn't quite as hardcore secret agent as Signal, but still gives the user control of their messages on their own server. So those are my top five confusions when I first started using the Fediverse. And what's interesting is all of them were with Mastodon. I think it's because Mastodon was the first thing that I used on the Fediverse and where I learned how the Fediverse works. What's interesting is I haven't been really confused with other services since then because I think once you've gotten your head around one Fediverse service, you have this kind of base level of knowledge that makes all Fediverse services a lot easier. It's kind of like learning to ride a bike, you know? The first bike is extremely hard, but once you know how to ride one, the others fundamentally work with the same physical principles and limitations, apart from unicycles, I guess. A single wheel off by itself, which I guess would be blue sky. Anyway, if you stick with it for a few months, keep curious. You'll be whizzing around the neighborhood in no time, making dad proud. So, so proud.